The German song is one of the simplest and most straightforward pieces in the German album. It is some kind of a combination of a yodeling song and a landler. So let's discuss the landler aspect first. The landler was a German dance um, that is in three and goes um, chonk, chonk, or in this case, dances that we've already heard in the album and we hear in so many of our pieces. It sounds like it could be a waltz or a mazurka, but it's very important to make sure that we do not confuse the landler with either of the other two. Both the waltz and a mazurka have very pronounced rhythmic lilts. With the waltz, the first beat is emphasized and prolonged. And in a mazurka, the second beat is often emphasized and prolonged. In a landler, none of those things happen. Landler just goes one, two, three, one, two, three. So in general, it is rather important to not overthink or over confuse the rhythm in this piece. It really goes straight. complications and they have to do with the dotted rhythms. So the problem of the various dotted rhythms comes up again and again in the children's album. It obviously was very important to Tchaikovsky and as we have discussed before the dotted rhythms mathematically go 3 plus 1. But in reality the situation is much more complicated. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, sometimes we under dot where the, um, the short note gets a little bit more than a quarter of the value, closer to a third. This creates a very soft, slow flowing effect. Most of the time, however, we over dot where the proportion is not 3 to 1, but something closer to 6 to 1, 7 to 1 maybe even. Right? This creates sort of a snappy dance-like effect. Getting students to count 7 to 1 is completely impossible. So my solution with my own students is to suggest treating the short note after the dotted note as some kind of a little upbeat or a little bit of a grace note. I waited much longer than necessary on the dotted note and that is because most of the time students just can't seem to wait long enough so I suggest practicing with that little adaptation of prolonging the dotted note longer than its written value longer even than its over dotted value just as an exercise so that eventually we have a quarter note that always lasts the same amount of time. Another problem in the German song is the double notes. For a young or inexperienced pianist, they really are very difficult. We have not one but two problems here to consider. So not only should the thirds come down absolutely simultaneously, avoiding this. Right? That sounds very yucky. But also, we have to be able to voice our double notes so that the top note is always loudest and we avoid this. Did you hear how disorganized this was? Sometimes the top note was louder, sometimes the bottom note was louder. What a mess. There are various ways to practice double notes that are quite effective. Here I will show you just a few exercises that, that I particularly love and then you can choose which ones work for you. So in the first exercise, we're going to double the top note. Exactly the opposite. We're going to double 
the lower note. This really helps the brain understand what each finger is doing. In the third exercise, we're doubling both notes. If you feel like you need more, you can alternate the notes. And of course, reverse. of practicing these exercises that some feel great and make you sound fantastic and others just feel terribly uncomfortable. So of course you're going to concentrate on practicing the uncomfortable ones and try to understand what exactly is causing the problem. Are you on the wrong finger number? Is your finger in a bad position? Are you too far above the key? Right? When it comes to performance however, Remember what the comfy and pleasant exercise felt like because clearly something about that, something about the angle of your hand or the curvature of your fingers or the correct fingering made it really work. As in many of these pieces, there's a great deal of repetition. I think one of Tchaikovsky's purposes for writing the album was to teach us, the young performers, to use our imagination, to think of ways to make same things different. The melody can be loud. Since our actual melody is eight measures long, perhaps on at least one of the repetitions, you can do four measures loud, four measures soft. Well, that was fun, but what if you want to do something different? How about the first four measures crescendo? And then the second four measures, what fun! I do not know how to pick. I love them both. So how about doing it differently the first time and then the second time? Or perhaps doing it differently when it's sunny out versus when it 